I'm going to try and print UV resin on a standard printer, so basically FDM resin printing. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. More about them later in the video. I've had this idea for quite some time and I think it enables some interesting possibilities that I want to explore. But then I saw Joel's video. And with UV LED lamp, polymerize it, cure it. Transform it from a gel to a solid state material. Mm -hmm. As long as the gel you're depositing is next or can touch, cured gel that you've already printed, then you can just cure it in place and keep going. Instantaneously. Fortunately, I'm going with a different approach. And this idea consists out of two parts. Applying the resin, I don't think I can call it extruding, and curing <laughs> the resin. I've done something similar in the past with this thing where I managed to print mayonnaise on a toast. Until this day, I think that's the most tasty video I've ever made. The problem with the syringe is that you have a limited volume or you need a big syringe, but then you need to move a lot of weight around and you have to fill up that syringe. I'm going to try and print with a pump and that's easier said than done. There are several types of pumps, like the low pump, with the mono pump, geared pumps. They all have their own strengths and weaknesses and you can turn this into a study on its own. I decided to go with a different type of pump, the Peristaltic pump. The main reason why I'm using this type of pump is because the mechanics don't come in contact with the fluid. That's a, a nice thing if you're working with resin. I hope that this 4 mm outer diameter, 2 mm inner diameter, basically the same as a Bowden tube. I hope that this is enough. At this moment, I'm printing the first prototype of the peristaltic pump that I just designed. The big disadvantage of the peristaltic pump is that it has a pulsating movement with each roller pushing this fluid through this tube. I think I have an idea how to compensate that, but first I want to try and see how bad it actually is before I'm going to try and solve something that isn't actually an issue. Okay, it fits. And considering that this is the first prototype, I cannot complain. This is a two-part system. I can slide this off. The tube just goes on like this. The tolerances are a bit coarse. Okay, I have this beaker filled with water. And now I'm curious how fast is the flow and is it also possible to apply a precise amount of water I can just suck up the water through it. If we have to do this every time with resin, then we are going to have a problem. The gap between these rollers and this outer circumference is too large, so it doesn't close this tubing. The easy solution is to make bigger rollers. I've got room enough for that. Okay, I've added the bigger rollers. All right, pump the water. <laughs> it also retracts. It goes about as fast as regular filament does when manually extruding it. But the problem is that the pulsating flow pulsates even more than I thought it would. We've got ourselves a challenge. What I think that's happening is that this, this tubing is compressed here. And right at this moment here, the diameter of the tube is increasing again so that also increases the volume and i think that right at this point the flow rate is decreasing what i think is that the flow is quite constant but it has dips instead of pulses i hope that i've got a solution for that and it's this new design it's a bit more complex i also added a dovetail at both sides so it interlocks better this is a spiral shape and what i hope to achieve 
is that this increase of volume is over a longer period of time. These dips are still there, but they are stretched out. So hopefully that will be less noticeable in the print. The print has just finished. So let's put it together. I thought that this would be an easy task, but um, I've been through a couple of iterations. It took a while to finally have a version which doesn't pulsate and doesn't uh, open up this tube. And now I've got a constant flow, but there is a very interesting phenomenon going on here. Well, let me just grab the camera. This is the inlet and this is the outlet and it's pulsating just as bad as it was before. And if we go all the way through and now this is not pulsating. <laughs> I think that with this pump I can already do some testing. Okay, the hot end has heated up. So now we should be able to pump this. I've connected this thing through this extension cable. I'm curious if it turns it to the right direction. Extrude 10 millimeters. Oh man, again. Oh gee. It's extruding again in the wrong. Um. I've reversed the motor direction. I've also added one of these nozzles, these lure lock nozzles at the end of this tube and I mounted everything very professionally to this tool plate here. Everything should be set up and ready for its first test print. Okay, here it goes. <laughs> You're kidding me. <laughs> I'm printing with water. I think that this is the most useless print I've ever made. Okay, we can see that the surface tension is a bit of a problem. I think that if I'm going to print with resin, then the surface tension isn't that much of an issue, but I don't want to just print uncured resin on here. So I'm going to focus on curing the resin. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace offers an elegant and simple solution to build your website. So whether you're a musician, photographer, within a day you can build your own website. With a website you determine what people get to see and you can steer them in the direction where you want them to go. You can sell products and services. You can schedule appointments, you can create member areas, and you can even manage reservations. If you have a restaurant, for instance, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And if your website is ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash proper printing to save 10% off your first purchase or domain on there. Let's go back to the video. I'm not going to use LEDs for curing the resin. I'm going to use this laser module. And it says that the wavelength is between 400 and 450 nanometers, which is exactly the same wavelength as the normal resin printers work at. I think it should be possible to cure resin with this cheap laser. This thing can already be controlled with 3D printer. You can connect this to the part and fan and PWM control this, so you also have control over the power. It goes without saying that this is actually quite dangerous. You can lose your eyesight even from this cheap low power laser. So I've got special laser goggles. I've got this tile here, so I have a safe and dark place where I can go if something goes wrong. I've got this fume extractor, so if it catches fire, then it will suck up the fire. And gloves, of course. Okay, first check if I can turn on the laser manually. Yes, we have a spot. Whoa. Laser is working. Okay, the idea is to cure the resin and not to burn it. Okay. Okay, let's do this quickly and see what it does to the resin. Okay, that's interesting. And let's see if it's cured. <laughs> it's cured. <laughs> wow, nice. <laughs> Even with the big spot like this, I can just cure the whole thing. This works way better than I I expected. Well, we are able to extrude liquids and it's possible to cure resin with a laser. Now I have to combine both and hopefully we can FDM print with resin. I just finished this part. This is printed out of resin. I think it looks pretty dope, but it was 
quite a lot of work. I had to re-drill all of these holes to make them perfect. The idea of this part is that at the center I can place the lure lock nozzle and in the circumference I will add this optical fiber. For this I cannot reach it so I've made a simple tool. I can insert the nozzle in here, screw it in here like this. I've made this adapter which can be pushed on here. Let's see how well this light of this laser is guided through these optical fibers. These fibers they melted a bit quicker than I expected when I was shrinking this shrinking tube. So hopefully that didn't damage it. This laser can be controlled by using the part end fan and I can do that manually. And hopefully nothing will melt. Um, the light is not going through all of these optical fibers. Okay, it looks better on camera than it looks through my glasses because I just I see a little bit of green. To find out why this isn't working. They aren't all against the um, the laser. I think I have to do something tricky with the heat gun. Warm this up so it melts and hopefully I can push it through. Ah, hot. I have to make a new bundle of fibers because this sucks. One fortunate thing is that the glue I applied doesn't do much. I'm able to use the same part again, fortunately, because it's a lot of work. God. Okay. God. <laughs> hey, new challenge! I've made a redesign of the nozzle and it looks even more like a welding torch than it did before. And the idea is to just plug it directly onto the laser engraver. So the laser engraver goes on top of here. And the idea is that all the fibers can be pressed from inside of here and hopefully come out of here. There's a lot going on on the inside. All the fibers here, they shoot. Hopefully when you press them from the bottom, they hopefully will be guided through here and just get out of here. And this is the tube for the fluid. The fibers will collide to that. So I made a, well, a fin shape. So the, the fibers from here, they will be guided around this. Damn. I really wanted to make this thing out of resin, but I figured that I don't need this part here. I can just use this tube itself as the center and only use the thread to hold this nozzle in place. The only thing smooth here is my brain, but I managed to get this th I managed to get this thing. I I managed to right. all the way up to 255. Uh no yeah. Serious. Did. Redesign. Back to the drawing board. At the beginning of this video, I didn't expect that I would settle with a solution like this. Let's turn this thing on and see if 
There you go. On. Okay. Well, there is some UV light coming from it. First, I'm going to do the dry run to see if it works with the cold extrusion and if everything works well and if the laser turns on. It should start immediately. Okay. And it extrudes. And the laser is on. Heating failed. It's um, at minus 14 degrees. So maybe I have to add the 100k resistor. And now it shows 25 degrees. It looks pretty good. So um, I'm just going to start the print and see if the resin is being cured while printing. Okay. No way. Okay. I did not expect this. Okay, stop, 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 stop. This is not going good. <laughs> but this is already a result. All right, it's a new day. I've done a little modification to it. So it looks a bit cooler. That usually does the trick. I've reduced the print speed and I've reduced the E-steps. Let's see what these new settings will do. Yeah, this is impossible to remove. <laughs> it's already hardened. I've leveled the bed a bit better. Uh, stop. Why isn't there any material coming out? Is the nozzle blocked or something? This is cured resin inside of the tube. Well, there's your problem. This is the most straightforward solution I can think of. Actually making use of the fact that this is a laser module. So it doesn't cast light anywhere except for here at the tip. I can also change the, um, the focal length. I can make the spot bigger or smaller. I'm afraid that it's curing inside of the nozzle already. Ah, shit. How do I prevent that? We somehow have to find a way to get the light around the nozzle. And I think it came up with the most monkey brain solution ever. I've got these small lenses and in the center I just added a bit of electrical tape. I cut it out with my laser. I placed the laser on the floor because I don't have any room here left. This should cast a shadow around the nozzle. So the light will go around it. Oh. Okay, the stuff on the nozzle isn't curing, so that's, that's a good thing. Okay, let's check if the stuff that it has laid down, if that's cured. Oh, it is. Right now I'm FDM printing with resin. A piece of electrical tape is doing the fucking trick. Second layer printing. This is surreal. Yes. Well, it's not the prettiest thing I've ever printed, but um, well, everything is cured. I think it would be a fun idea to print something in a vase mode, so only the circumference. My idea was to print this vase mode print, this rocket. At first I tried with this low viscosity resin and I thought this is going to work. Wow, that first layer is perfect. But it didn't. It's failing again. It's printing midair. This process turns out to be very tricky. If at any point of the print the nozzle doesn't come in contact with the print, then a drop will start. Unlike standard 3D printing, it's not able to recover from that. This is the best I could get. I also tried with the high viscosity resin. I made some art. I was thinking of ending this video. I decided not to. And I've bought an extra laser unit. So the light comes from both sides. We have twice the amount of curing power. And I've bought a translucent tube instead of the transparent. So I can also open up the window and I don't get depressed. Let's see if those two lasers do the trick. <sighs> Okay, I'm going to do this different. Stop the print. I'm going to make something for that nozzle. So it doesn't cure in the nozzle itself. This is going to work. Yeah. The earring. No, stop it. This is the first try I'm doing after that face mode print. If you compare this to my first attempt, I think I've got another idea. You can hear it scraping. Just look at it. If this works, then this will be epic. <laughs> this isn't going to move if there is a minor hiccup on the, in the print. I don't need the heater block because that blocks the light. So I've just used an M6 insert. Ah, there it is. 
This is looking so much better. It extrudes too much right now. Yeah, that's over extruding. I tried several times to print that gear. I used different surfaces to prevent the UV light from reflecting, but that didn't work. It still looks like shit. Eventually it began ah. leaking. Which I managed to resolve with the smallest print I've ever made. I made this bottle opening design, which should be a lot easier to print. I figured out that the resin must really flow to prevent the nozzle from clogging. So I increased the print speed, got clogged nozzles sometimes, tried again with different build surfaces. The nozzle always ended up scraping on the part. I pretty much gave up, but I really want to print that bottle opener. But screw it, I'm going to use all my filled parts to make one. Thanks to my Patreon supporters, especially these guys. I really needed your support right now. Also thanks to 3D Resins for providing me with resin. If you have any suggestions, then please let me know. I do have some ideas myself and I think I'm very close. But I'm definitely not done with this. I hope you like this video and uh, see you in the next one.